So we're back uh, with some more editions of the Smoking Targets. We're going to try and cover targets that we didn't do before and we've also had quite a few questions come in on pairs, fit ass mounts, etc. So we're going to try and cover those for you. I'm joined by a different student this time, Dave. Dave Hughes here with me. Dave's been a student of mine for three years. Progressed through the classes, he's now regularly winning in his A class. So we're going to have a look at what we can do and try and push on and give you a little bit more knowledge throughout this series. The first target we're going to come up to today is the quartering bird. This one's going to come off our left side medium height. The quartering bird's a target that's become more prominent in shooting. Because shooting grounds are actually getting smaller, we're losing real estate, the big crosses of the past that we used to shoot have actually becoming less and less because they take up too much space. You throw a big crosser, you can actually throw it into two more stations. So this fast quartering bird is something you really have to have in your toolbox and it'd be, be up around that 90, 95% mark if you want to do any damage. So what we're going to try and do here is let Dave shoot a couple first, see how he takes the shot, see if there's anything I notice that he is doing wrong. If you, replay, if you do have a look at my method star, because it is going away from us, what we, Dave will be doing is inserting in behind the clay, letting the clay pass him before he moves and rotates through his core, bringing the gun from a negative lead into the target before taking the shot. Okay? Dave, you're going to shoot a couple of those for us. Whoa. Nice move. And again. Whoa! Okay, so what went wrong there? We had a nice break on the first bird, and then we suffered a loss on the second one. Yeah. So if you talk me through your shot process, what went through your mind when we approached this stand? Fear. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the targets on the course, which is not a very good one to be on my side. What I did is I tried to let the bird beat me. I came up from behind the target, and as I went to my positive leave, I pulled my trigger. I think, unfortunately, as I pulled the trigger, the target dropped away and I went through the top of it. So talk me through your kill point. Why was your kill point? Let's have a look. Your <laughs> kill point. Why did you pick now? Why I picked there now is because that's where I saw the target the clearest Whoa. for me. I'm going to disagree with you. Right. And I'm going to tell you that that's where you were comfortable. Okay. That's your comfort zone. Yeah. And I would be hard pressed to believe you if you told me you didn't see it better there than there. Yeah, possibly. But that's what people do, we defend, we go into a defensive okay. mode. It's smallest over there, it's dropping away from us. What I would like to see you do is come back a little bit further, so we're going to hold halfway back from where we're going to see it the yeah. biggest. And again, we're going to pick now, somewhere around that, that fir tree there. Okay. So we're going to come back left-hand side of the tower. Yeah. It's going to come through the gun. As we close down that negative lead, we're going to go to no positive lead. Right. We're going to actually place the shot on the target, and we're hopefully going to see a break much, much earlier than what we did before. Totally different shot. Yeah. A lot of people, they have their comfort zone, they have where they're comfortable, and they'll try and take as many shots in that comfort zone as you can. And that's what Dave suffered there. If we can take, if we're going to shoot a 100 bird competition and we can shoot the target in the right place a 100 times, we're going to have a better score. I mean, as you can see there, I think you defended. Yeah. You didn't necessarily do what was best for and that it target. Didn't feel rushed as well. No, it's not rushed. You know, we can move that gun very quickly. Angles are in our favor. Let's just see what that looks like one more time. Whoa! And there's that consistency that we want. Yep. You know, not just shooting it inside our comfort zone, actually doing what's best yeah. for that specific target. Nice shot. It's uh, having the confidence to do it, <laughs> but yeah, I agree. The trap's probably 20 yards to our left going to be cutting across a quartering line away from us. It has got a bit of a knuckle on it where it is going to dive over. Because of gun speed and also cartridge velocity versus clay speed, there's no positive lead on this target or very, very little. So for me, the only way to control that small lead is to start behind it. If I shoot pull away, the moment I pull, I'm already too far on positive lead. If I start in front, if we don't want any lead, that's also going to be a problem. So what I'm intending to do here is let the clay pass me within that one to two feet range. I'm then going to start the speed. The gun is going to turn from my waist. I'm not going to use my arms because that's going to pull, pull, me pull left and push right. So I'm then going to rotate through the line. I'm going to watch the negative lead close. The barrel will be catching the clay up at one constant speed. Swing through is a one speed shot. As I then see that negative lead close down, I see the barrel come into the bird. That is when I will pull the trigger and hopefully we'll have a successful shot. Pull.
the competitions are getting busier. So this target here, you can see if I'm in the shooting position, the trap is behind me. That means the ground owner doesn't have to stop that station when he loads that target. So there's no delays, you know, if, if that target breaks down out there, the whole shooting position stops while they go and fill that. And that probably takes up what, a 30 yard channel. If we put a big crosser from this side to this side, this, you know, we can't have another stand for another 40 yards that way because that target's going to come into view and we find it more and more and more the targets coming in and targets going out are pretty predominant of what we're shooting. We had the English Open a week ago. I've never shot so many incomers and outgoers because that ground is very small and the big crosses simply can't be thrown.